In this video, we're going to talk about the double displacement reaction. Double displacement reactions are a class of reactions that usually produce beautiful precipitates. For example, if we mix a solution of sodium hydroxide and copper 2 sulfate, we get a bright blue precipitate in the end. But what exactly is going on here? Well, this is what's known as a double displacement reaction. For instance, in the previous example, we had sodium hydroxide and copper sulfate. What happens is that once the two solutions are mixed, the ions swap places. So, for example, copper, instead of being paired with sulfate, is now paired with hydroxide. And sodium, instead of being paired with hydroxide, is now paired with sulfate. Notice that in order to make the copper hydroxide formula neutral, we had to include two hydroxide ions. Same goes for the sodium sulfate. We needed two sodium ions to balance the two minus charge on the sulfate. In order to balance this reaction, we need to place a two in front of the sodium hydroxide. Now all of the atoms and all of the ions are completely balanced. The next step in this reaction is to determine which compounds are soluble in water and which ones are insoluble. For this, we'll have to use a solubility guideline. Using this table, we can determine that sodium hydroxide is soluble, so we write the AQ for aqueous state of matter in parentheses after the sodium hydroxide. Copper sulfate is also soluble. However, copper hydroxide is insoluble in water, so we write an S for solid as its state of matter. And that leaves sodium sulfate with also soluble in water. This is what's known as the molecular equation. We represent all the ionic species written as a single formula unit, regardless of solubility. However, if we want more information about this reaction, we need to write out the complete ionic equation. What this means is we're going to separate each one of the compounds that are soluble in water into their individual ions. So if we have two sodium hydroxides in solution, that means we have two sodium ions in solution and two hydroxide ions in solution. Same for copper sulfate. We have a copper 2 plus ion and an SO4 2 minus ion in solution. However, we do not split up the copper hydroxide because that is a solid. The copper ions and the hydroxide ions do not exist as individual ions on the product side of the reaction. They are paired up as a solid. And that leaves us with two sodium ions and a sulfate ion on the product side. This is what's known as the complete or total ionic equation, and we're going to represent all the soluble species written as individual ions with their states of matter. The last equation is the net ionic equation. Now if we take a look at this equation, this total ionic equation, we notice that the sodium ions exist in the exact same form on both sides of the reaction arrow. We have two sodium ions as reactants and two sodium ions as products. They didn't actually do anything. So if you have a species on both sides of the reaction arrow that are the exact same state of matter, the exact same form, the exact same charge, these are what's known as spectator ions. They didn't actually do anything. And that also includes sulfate. So if they didn't actually do anything, they were not part of the reaction. So we don't include them in our net ionic equation. So that leaves us with two hydroxide ions plus copper two go to form copper hydroxide, the solid. This is what's known as the net ionic equation. It only includes species that are actually involved in the reaction Anything else is known as a spectator ion. 